Welcome guys, thanks for joining us again in this another video. In today's video, we want to complete from question 21 to 30. And remember, we are working on the stage 2. Set 1. City and Gills Math Pass Paper. Alright? Now, before we get into this video, please, if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. And also like the video. That's really a free way to support the Chris Maths Academy. Alright? Now let's get right into it. Now we're looking at question 21. Now four brothers share the cost of a meal equally. The total cost of the meal is $151.44. How much does each brother pay? Fair enough. Now the key thing here is that the four brothers share the cost of the meal equally. Alright, so in order to determine the amount that each brother will be required to pay, we need to divide the cost of the meal into four equal parts, all right? So, want to know how many times can four go into this $151.44 right here, all right? Now, four into 15 goes three times, three times four, I believe that's 12. 12 from 15 will leave us with three right here. Carry down the one. 4 into 31 goes 7 times, 7 times 4, that's 28. 28 from 31 will leave us with 3. Now can 4 go into 3? Of course not, so we're going to place our decimal point here. Bring down the 4. Now 4 into 34 goes 8 times, 8 times 4, that's 32. 32 from 34 will leave us with 2, carry down the 4 right here now 4 into 24 goes 6 times 6 times 4 that's 24 24 from 24 that will leave us with 0 so we'll pretty much finish right here so our answer would be $37.86 which is option C alright now we're looking at question 22 a customer buys a printer costing $126.38 in costing $48.79 and paper costing $21.68. How much change should she get from $200, all right? Now, before we can determine the change, we must first determine the overall cost of the items purchased, all right? Now, we want to add up the cost of each of the items so that we know that the, what, the printer costs $126.38, the ink costs $48.79 and the papers cost $21.68. Alright, so I want to add these up to ascertain the overall cost. Now 8 plus 9, I believe that's 17. 17 plus 8, that's 25. 5 carry the 2 here. Now 6 plus 7, that's 13 plus 3, that's 16 plus 2, that's 18. So 8 carry the 1 here. Just carry back down our decimal point right here. 1 plus 8, that's 9. 9 plus 6, that's 15. Plus 1, that's 16. 6 carry the 1. 2 plus 4, that's 6. Plus 2, 8. Plus 1, 9. And we just carry back down the 1 here. So the overall cost of the items would be $196.85. Now we can then determine the amount of change you'll get from the $200, alright? By just simply subtracting the cost of the items from the $200. So we're going to take the $196.85 from the $200, alright? We can't get 5 from 0, so we're going to borrow from the 20 here. Borrow 1 from the 20, leaving 19. We're going to place that 1 here that we'll borrow, making this 10. Then we're going to borrow from the 10 again. Borrow 1 from the 10, leaving 9. We're going to place that 1 here that we'll borrow. Making this 10, going to borrow again from the 10, leaving 9, place the 1 right here. Now 5 from 10 will leave us with 5, 8 from 9, that's 1. 6 from 9 will leave us with 3, 19 from 19 is 0, so therefore our answer is $3.15, which is option A right here. Now we're at question 23. Theater tickets cost $57.50 each. A customer orders five tickets. There is an additional booking fee of $1.50 per ticket. The total cost for the five tickets is 
fair enough. Now, before we can determine the total cost for the five tickets, we need to determine the total cost for one ticket, all right? Now recall that even though the theater ticket costs $57.50, there is an additional booking fee per ticket, which amounts to $1.50, which means the total cost for one ticket would actually be what? $57.50 plus the additional booking fee per ticket, which is $1.50, all right? Zero plus zero, that's zero. Five plus five, that's 10. Zero carry one. Let me bring back down our decimal point here. One plus seven, that's eight. Plus one, that's nine. And we just carry down the five here. So therefore, the overall cost for one ticket is $59, all right? Fair enough. Now, if one ticket costs us $59, then five tickets should cost us five times as much, all right? So five times 59, let's see what we'll get here. Five times nine, that's 45. Five carry the four here. Five times five, that's 25. Plus the four, that's 29. So therefore, the cost for five tickets would actually be $295 zero cents which is option a right here all right now we're looking at question 24 a new firm says it will employ 300 people one third of the people will work part-time how many people will work part-time now in order to determine the number of persons that will be working part-time we must find one third of the total amount of persons that will be employed all right now one third of of in math mean multiplication one third of the 300 let's see what we'll get 300 is the same thing as 300 over one all right one times 300 is 300 three times one is three three into 300 goes a hundred times so therefore our answer here would actually be 100 so 100 people will be working part-time all right now we're looking at question 25 5 divided by 10 is the same as, fair enough, now 5 divided by 10, um, we, we can reduce this fraction, you can say 5 into itself goes 1 time, 5 into 10 goes 2 time, so 5 divided by 10 is the same thing as a half, 1 divided by 2 which is option D right here. Now looking at question 26, a bag of tomatoes weigh 3 quarter kilograms. What weight is left after using half kilograms of tomatoes? All right, fairly easy question here. Now, if we want to know what weight is left after using the half kilograms of tomatoes, all we need to do here is to take the half kilogram from the three quarter kilogram that we had initially. All right, so that's three quarter minus the half kilogram, all right? And when we are subtracting fractions, the key thing here is that we get both denominators to be the same, whether by LCM or, or writing an equivalent fraction, which allows um, a half here to have the same denominator, which is four right here. And I'll demonstrate that. First, I'm going to demonstrate the LCM method, finding the lowest common multiple. Now the lowest common multiple is the same thing as saying we want to find a number that both 4 and 2 can go into without leaving a remainder. That's the lowest number that both 4 and 2 can go into without leaving a remainder. Alright, that number would be 4. Alright, so that's the smallest number that both 4 and 2 can go into without leaving a remainder. Now 4 into 4 goes 1 times, 1 times 3, that's 3, minus 2 into 4 goes 2 times. 2 times 1, that's 2. Now 3 minus 2, that's 1, divided by the LCM here, which is 4. Alright? So therefore, our answer would actually be a quarter. Now I'm also going to demonstrate this by using the equivalent fraction method as well. Alright? Now, what we can do here, so we take in a half from three quarter now we're just going to keep the three quarters here minus now we're just going to write an equivalent fraction for one divided by two 
which allows for four to be in the denominator which will be the same denominator as three quarter here which is four so we are going to rewrite one divided by two as two divided by four which is the same thing as a half all right now that we have the de common denominators we can now say three minus two that's one divided by the common denominator which is four all right so we still get the quarter kilograms all right now looking at question 27 a bus left the bus station half an hour late and was delayed by a further three quarter of an hour during the journey it arrived at its destination now want to determine which of these give us the correct answer all right so we want to add up the time so it was half an hour late and then it was delayed by a further three quarter of an hour so we need to add these up so half plus three quarter let's see what we'll get now the same thing applies when adding fraction just as when we were subtracting fractions we need both denominators to be the same and again we can use the lcm method again by now you understand what lcm means that's the lowest common multiple in other words that's the lowest number that both two and four can go into without leaving a remainder and that would be four right here now two into four goes two times two times one will give us a two bring down this addition sign right here now four into four goes one time one times three that's three two plus three that's five divided by the lcm which is four now this is the same thing we can then convert this improper fraction to a mixed fraction all right now four goes into five one time leaving a remainder of one divided by the denominator here which is four all right so this is the same thing as one and a quarter which is option b right here and again you can also solve this question using the equivalent fraction concept as well all right and i'm going to demonstrate that for you right now all right so we can write the equivalent fraction for one divided by two which is the same thing as two divided by four by writing it like this it allows for four to be in the denominator which means we'll have common denominators here all right so one divided by two is the same thing as two divided by four because if we reduce this fraction we'll end up with the same half here all right in the form of one divided by two now that we have common denominators we can then go on and add the numerator so two plus three that's five divided by the common denominator which is four and again we can convert this improper fraction to a mixed fraction so four into five goes one times even a remainder of one divided by the denominator which is four all right all right now looking at question 28 a carpenter has a length of wood measuring 5 8 meters he cuts a quarter meters length from it how much wood is left all right so if he cuts a quarter meters length from it it's the same thing as taking a quarter meter length from it all right so we want to take that quarter meter length from the 5 8 meter that we had initially and again we can use the LCM method here but I know you understand what that is so pretty much want to find the smallest number that both 8 and 4 can go into without leaving a remainder that would be 8 now 8 into 8 goes 1 times 1 times 5 that's 5 bring our minus sign down here 4 into 8 goes 2 times 2 times 1 that's 2 5 minus 2 that's 3 divided by our LCM which is 8 right here so that's 3 8 meters all right so this would be our answer right here option C all right now I'm also going to demonstrate how you could have done this using the concept of equivalent fraction as well all right so we take in the quarter from the 5 8 1 fourth now we can rewrite one divided by 4 as 2 divided by 8 all right so we just rewrote a quarter in the form which allows for 8 to be in the denominator here 
Now 5 from 2 will give us a 3 right here divided by the common denominator which is 8, alright? So still 3 eighths meter right there. Alright, now we're looking at question 29. 5 out of 20 people did not turn up for an appointment. What is this number as a percentage? All right. Now 5 out of 20 people, we can represent that as a fraction. So 5 would be our numerator right here. Out of the 20 people, that's how we can represent this as a fraction. All right. So this is the same thing as so 5 divided by 20 is the same thing as saying 5 out of 20. All right. Now if we want to represent this number as a percentage, we can just simply multiply it by 100 since percentage is just a ratio out of 100. Now 100 is the same thing as 100 divided by 1. And we can simplify here to make life a whole lot easier for ourselves, all right? So 20 into itself goes one time. 20 into 100 goes five times. Five times five, that's 25. So therefore, this number as a percentage is the same thing as 25%, which is option D right here. Now to look at the final question in this video segment, question 30. Six students out of a class of 50 students arrive late for a lecture. What is this number as a percentage? Alright, again, the six would be our numerator. So six out of 50. We can represent it like this. So six divided by 50 is the same thing as saying six out of 50. And again, if we want to represent this as a percentage, we just multiply it by 100 because percentage is just a ratio out of 100. 100 is the same thing as 100 divided by 1 and we can simplify here, alright? So 50 into itself goes 1 times, 50 into 100 goes 2 times, 2 times 6, that's 12. So 6 out of 50 as a percentage is the same thing as 12% which is option C right here. I'm looking forward to see you guys in our next video where we tackle question 31 to 40. So please stick with me throughout this video series. Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you haven't yet done it, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. That's really a free way to support the Chris Matz Academy as we continue to strive to make awesome things happen. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, blessings and peace.